My name is Leah DeGrushi, and you are listening to the 24-hour International Beethoven Celebration, sponsored by the Foundation for the Revival of Classical Culture. We have a recording of Kobe Bryant playing the Moonlight Sonata, which we will play in just a moment. On the passing of Kobe Bryant, the Foundation put out a statement titled, Kobe Bryant and Beethoven. The world says thank you to both. And the contents of this statement are, the philosopher Gottfried Leibniz believed that from every tragedy, misfortune, or evil, there came a greater good. Whether or not we might agree, in this year of Beethoven's 250th birthday, the triumph over adversity, which is Beethoven's trademark, should be the standpoint from which to view and respond to the shocking misfortune of the death of Kobe Bryant, his daughter Gianna, and seven others, now discussed worldwide. Many have been startled to learn, in the aftermath of the tragic death of basketball legend Kobe Bryant, of his love for composer Ludwig van Beethoven. Bryant had even learned to play the piano and perform portions of Beethoven's Moonlight Sonata. A New York Times article entitled Bond Over Beethoven Led to Kobe Bryant's Oscar for Dear Basketball, a documentary based on a poem Bryant wrote, recounted the relationship between animator Glenn Keane, who illustrated the documentary, and Bryant. Dear Basketball illustrated the poem Bryant wrote in 2015 as a farewell to the sport he loved. It served as his announcement that the, that the 2015 2016 season would be his last. In the poem, recognizing that his body can no longer bear the game's demands, he accepts the, inevitably, the inevitability of retirement. The two men bonded through a shared love of Beethoven. Keane, who had animated Beast in Disney's Beauty and the Beast, to Beethoven's Ninth Symphony, was amazed to learn that in one championship game, Kobe structured his performance and the strategy of the game to the rhythms of Beethoven's Fifth Symp Symphony. Bryant explained in the 2017 interview, every game has a structure, just like a piece of music has structure and momentum. You have to be conscious of how that momentum is building to be able to shift or alter it. A separate commentary added, Elsewhere in his Showtime special, Bryant talks about the struggle he went through late in his career after a number of bad injuries, where he was fighting his body's limitations to put it together for one last run at a title and one last bit of greatness. He said he thought a lot about Beethoven, who he said probably wasn't supposed to write a Ninth Symphony while legally deaf, but he did it anyway. And Bryant found that comforting in a if he can push himself to battle his body and do that, I can overcome my body to do this kind of way. Kobe actually put out a basketball shoe in his line that was inspired by Beethoven's ninth. A meme appeared yesterday on Twitter with a picture of the Bryant shoe and the words, be like Kobe and Beethoven, walk the walk. Perhaps the second movement of Beethoven's third symphony, the Eroica, were one way for all of those that cared about Bryant and what he stood for to reflect upon his passing. The Foundation for the Revival of Classical Culture joins those around the world that believe, as Bryant believed, in the power of music, particularly the power of Beethoven, to cause people to rise above themselves, including in what seems the most unbearable of tragedies, and to emerge victorious even as they rise above their mortality into immortality.
Hi, my name is Leah DeGrucci, and next we have a special surprise for our listeners. Recently, we sat down with American animator, author, and illustrator Glenn Keane, who is known for animating Disney's The Little Mermaid, Beauty and the Beast, Aladdin, and many others. He also directed and animated Kobe Bryant's Dear Basketball. And you can watch his latest project on Netflix called Over the Moon. I mean, when I was a little kid, about eight years old, my dad, um, who did a comic strip called The Family Circus, um, said, Glenn, I'm a cartoonist. You're an artist. And it was like being knighted. <laughs> it was the most wonderful words I ever, I ever imagined. And he gave me a book called Dynamic Anatomy uh, to start to study the figure and um, to really study classical drawing. Um, and I remember getting on the school bus uh, and had the sketchbook uh, of figures and, and my friends gathered around and they, um, they start, they looked at the drawings and they all started laughing and saying, <laughs> Keen's drawing naked guys. And, uh, you know, at that age, you know, when you're eight years old and your friends are laughing at you because of what you're doing, you don't do that anymore. And that was like a, 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 a fork in the road. But because my dad had said, Glenn, you're an artist and I loved him and I, shadowed him everywhere and you know as we went to art store and everything it he he had defined like in in a sense that soul that you're talking about like that's who i was and instead of feeling like oh i'm not going to do that anymore i looked at the, my friends and thought wow they don't get it i do i i love the fact that i love figurative drawing and classical and being an artist and and that that has followed me all the way through to the point when I was at Disney. Um, it wasn't about animation. It was about, I always saw myself as an artist first who was choosing to animate and whatever character I did, I was working on. I approached it very much from a, um, well, like if, if Michelangelo was alive or Rodin was alive, uh, they would, want to animate and what what would they do with the this art form and so i mean at one point on um beauty and the beast i was animating beasts transformation um and uh i had i had just gone to the norton simon museum and looked at the way he did the burgers of calais and the sculpture and, and the back muscles and and i realized I want, I, I've got to animate the beast turning in space and it'll be about his back and, and seeing this transformation from the inside coming out. And, and I started to animate that. And it just seemed I can only do half of it. I needed the music to describe that transformation that lifting and beautiful light coming out of him. And um, I had probably about 10 years before become kind of addicted to Beethoven's Nine. So I started to just listen to his music, especially in the fourth movement towards the end, as it sounds like the angels are singing as the heavens are opening and you fall before God and you, you know, it's just, incredibly beautiful music and um so that's what i animated it to and i would show i showed it to the directors with beethoven's ninth playing and um and it was it was so wonderful i mean i i feel like well it never got better than <laughs> beethoven's music playing we ended up scoring it differently but that's what's in my head um and years later uh 2017, I got a call from Kobe Bryant. Um, and he had been visiting various different studios and um, Jenny Rim, my producer, and I were there, my son Max, and we'd been doing some work. I left Disney now and we were in this tiny little 
house we were renting in West Hollywood for our studio, it was a Spanish style house. And Kobe was going to come and visit. Now he had just visited Pixar and Disney and DreamWorks and uh, looking for somebody to do some animation for him. I didn't know it at the time, but that's what he wanted to do after his basketball career was moved towards animation. Um, so we're waiting for Kobe and uh, this big you know, uh, SUV drives up and Kobe hops out with Vanessa and Gianna and Natalia and they, um, they came walking up and Kobe gives me a big hug. And I mean, I, I just couldn't believe that this was actually happening. And we walked into our little studio and I'm thinking, oh man, he has just visited the temples of animation in the world, you know, Disney, and they've really rolled out the red carpet and, you know, and, um, and I thought he's going to be very disappointed. Our little house, you know, we used the living room, tiny little living room for our story room. And there was little story sketches on the wall. And so Kobe walks in and he stopped. He's really quiet. He's looking around and I'm thinking, oh, I know he's thinking, what am I doing here? And as he's looking around, he said, um, it's perfect. I said, what, what do you mean? Perfect. He said, it's perfect. This little drawings on the wall, it's real. And I realized, you know, for him, basketball was about the focus, the discipline, it was, it was an art for him. And he saw on the walls, this was, there was nothing extra. <clears throat> Our little studio was, was real. Um, and so we all went to the back and we sat down and we, I told Kobe, look, um, you've got the worst basketball player on earth, uh, you know, to animate you. Um, <clears throat> and he said, well, that's okay because everything you learn about basketball is going to come, will be through studying him. And actually that little conversation happened later because this beginning conversation was really just about, do we connect? How do we, how do we bond together as, you know, a basketball player and an animator? And so, I was doing drawings. I think I was doing a drawing of the beast for um, for Kobe or you know for his family, and they and I was as I was drawing the beast, I was talking about animating him uh, to Beethoven's Ninth, and Kobe said, "What? What? Say that again?" I said, "Well, yeah, I was animating, you know, thinking very much of Beethoven's Ninth, which has always moved me." Uh, to try to animate beyond what I, I really could imagine. His music lifts you to another level. And he says, I know, I know. I played, uh, and I'm thinking, you know, it, I can't Moonlight remember. Sonata, I right? was, was, was it the Moonlight Sonata on the piano? No, no, it was Beethoven's fifth in one of the championship games. Um, and I can't remember exactly which one it was. It was possibly uh, against the Nuggets or, but it was, it was incredible listening to him talk about how the structure of the fifth symphony, he had been structuring the pace of his game to that. Dun, 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 you know, where you hit hard and there's power, but then you, you, come into the and you and you, you there's a rhythm and a building to it you don't um you don't go all the way at the beginning you you save it for the end and that he he said that it was playing in his head throughout that game and that he had structured it and planned it that way um and i he said so so what's Beethoven to you? I mean, how does it work for you? And I said, well, I, in listening to the Ninth Symphony, I'm just amazed at 
how Beethoven describes the, the course of life. Uh, the first movement, it feels like there is an inevitability of driving towards something incredible. Uh, he saves the fourth movement, you know, to bring this theme of joy. But in the beginning, it's, it feels like there's this <laughs> driving forward, driving forward. And then it's as if a wave in opposition pushes against it and it goes back. And then it keeps working again and it builds up again and another wave pushes it. And it's so true about life. And as I was describing this to Kobe, I said, this is, this is life that you, you have to believe at the end, there is this victory. And no matter what happens that you will never give up. And I mean, Kobe's eyes are just alive with fire. His nostrils are flaring. He's like, yes. <laughs> and I think both the two of us, we, we really connected over Beethoven at that moment. And, and then um, I think he felt very comfortable with us doing uh, the animation for Dear Basketball. Hi there.